that mm -hmm. your company is the biggest fintech company in Angola. Yes, I was yes. expecting to see an old man. An old man? <laughs> <laughs> old the, white man. The, oh, old white man. Old white man. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So I'm Wilson Ganga. Um, I'm an entrepreneur here in Angola, but I have a dream to build a million or to bring millions of jobs in Angola, and also a big dream to build up Africa and bring um, education and financial inclusion. I have a company called um, PayPay Africa, which is leading the fintech here in Angola, and um, I'm very excited for you guys to hear a little bit more about me. And thank you for Wold and his team and for choosing to for interview me. So thank you guys, and I hope you guys enjoy the show. Cheers. Yeah. You guys did this. We did. Um, we did it. We did How? It. Um, hard work, um, knowing the market, studying, studying out, being able to study outside. I think having education from America also opened up um, the ideas. And we have a good young team, good young team, good people, good family. And then the last six years, the Angolan government also like opened the laws. You know, they opened, they gave, they're able, they made it easier for young entrepreneurs to be able to apply for a license for a fintech. And we did it, and we're, it's going good. No, I, I think people watching us don't know who you are. Yeah, I, yeah, I just yeah. want yeah. first of all, my first question will be like, mm -hmm. what makes it the biggest fintech company in the whole of Angola? It's the biggest because of transactions, the number of customers that we have. We have about already one million paying customers that are transactioning every single day. Um, it's, and it's one of the first also too. The biggest is also one of the first, you know? So it's, and we have many services to measure. From our local currency, you can pay Netflix, Apple Music, you can pay services outside from our local currency. So it's big for our customers. It's good. I want you to explain this. Yeah. What does your company do? Yeah. So it's a, it's a mobile app, a digital okay. wallet app. Um, where we connect with all the banks in Angola and with it you can make payments via SMS transfers, Q payment by QR code um, and that's PayPay Pay. and then inside our group we have the Leva which is the biggest uh, electric car company taxi in Angola which connects to PayPay Pay, you know so inside PayPay Pay, you can get your Leva, you can get your taxi, you can order your food you know what I'm saying so it's a big it's pretty much a super app. You can do anything, so that's why it's. it's and, I, and you are saying it's the first ever in the country. Yeah, it's the first in the world. Yeah, first in the world. So if it's, it yeah. means that it's something that did not exist. It didn't exist before. Where did the idea came from? Then? It's just, I mean, traveling, <laughs> traveling, touring, and and also coming from solving solving problems. As we talked about before, if you go to an ATM in Angola, there's many, many people hmm. trying to in the line to get out cash, yeah. right? And many, many millions, millions of Angolas are just always cash, cash, cash. So we try to make a way to make payments more secure and able for, able to have financial, to have your financial services more in your hand, you know? So um, thank God we created this idea and it's, it's going good, yeah. If, if, if you have the biggest FinTech company, I want to ask how many people have you guys employed so far? In the FinTech right now, this company is probably the least people at 40, but in the group overall it's 10,000 people. From the um, mobility company Tileva, from the from Tupuka, which is the on-demand delivery service, which we uh, so many restaurants, supermarkets, everything's connected to our system. From the tourism app, so we have about 10,000 all young people. Okay, I'm the oldest, maybe at 31. What do you mean you're yeah. the oldest? At 31, you know, but all of them are like 20, 25, 26. So it's we're doing things pretty good here in the Angola market. You know, so no, I, I no, no, I, I don't want us to rush this. Mm -hmm. I want to know. Mm -hmm. The history, the yeah. dream. Who started yeah. this whole dream? Um, it was started at okay. First, it started with me back in in America. You know, I, I feel like I was very fortunate enough to go get a better education. Mm -hmm. You know, my parents were able to pay an education for me outside, um, and I was like, wow, like Africa. There's a lot of poverty. There's a lot of lack of education and lack of job opportunities. Mm -hmm. So my dream overall was trying to bring the education I was experiencing there and bring value here, right? So that was my goal of bringing jobs, you know? So it's like, because um, many people that maybe didn't have this opportunity before, maybe a building building economy by bringing jobs, bringing education, then people were, were gonna be able to also ha start making money and start investing in the economy. So that's where the dream came How from. long did you live in America? Um, I lived there for 17 years. Um, 
but ever since I've been back here, it's been I've been obsessed with Angola. You know, it's my home country, my love, so it's good. I, I don't understand how you get the chance to go to America. Yeah. Live there for 17 years. Yeah. And yeah decided yeah. to come back. You yeah. know, in, in, in Africa we have a question yeah, that yeah. we normally ask: Is yeah. everything okay with you? Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. Is everything okay with you, though? Or you want me to check? We, we gotta understand that it's the, America is not ours. Like it's at that time, Angola was in war. So the education system wasn't good. So, so many families that, that couldn't, they put their kids outside to, to get a better education. But America is not ours. Our home is Africa, man. And you know what I'm saying? And we have a lot of natural resources. We have a lot of opportunities. We're very, very smart. People just need a chance. You know, so I was like, man, if I could go back and give people a chance, bring jobs, bring ideas, bring innovation, um, maybe I could help build my, doing my, I'm doing my part. Maybe I could do my part and help build the economy. And we've been doing so. How long have you been back? Back now, about 10 years, 10 years, yeah. Will you say it's worth it coming back home? Of course, man. I think Angola is, you know, it's, it's difficult, but it's, it's your home country. You know, it's your, it's your love. You were born here. You know, this is your soil. This is your land. No one's taking you out. <laughs> you and I, I believe that yeah. since, since you are playing on home grounds, you're scoring more yeah. goals. Exactly, exactly. So it's, it's, and it's fun. People, and people look at you as a hero. You oh, know, wow. and, and, and as an example to them. So that's why whenever I can share my stories to people, right, um, I, I try. I try my best, you know. Sometimes I'm busy, but I try my best to go out, give, give um, speeches, right, at events, try to do something on YouTube just to share my experience because I may spark a light bulb on the next entrepreneur that also is looking for, you know, looking for ideas and motivation. You never mm -hmm. felt like a hero in America? I mean, I played sports in America. I played like football. I feel like I was very good at football and basketball, you know. So, um, but it's it's America. It did its job. But man, any African that's going outside to getting a better education, okay, you must come back and do your job for your economy. The economy is us. If we if we we can't complain that Africa doesn't have the infrastructure, we need to come back and fix. Like if everyone does their part. It's, you're gonna have a big, rich economy like the Mansa Musa days as it was before, you know what I'm saying? But everyone has to do their part. We can't run away from this. It's like, it's, thank God for the first world country, they do our part in getting better education, but we must come back and, and fix our, our economy. It needs, you know? I, I really wanna go around your office at a moment, yeah, but yeah. I wanna ask you something. Mm -hmm. When you hear the name Africa, yeah, yeah. what comes into your mind? Opportunities, you know? Opportunities, rich, natural resources, like I'm talking about, you can, you can go down the street here and you'll see a palm tree. You know what I'm saying? A palm tree. Yeah. Or a cocoa tree, a coconut tree. You know what I'm saying? You take this, and this grows coconut tree all naturally. Like, just natural. Without you doing anything, you can just take this coconut and you can sell it. There's countries in the world that don't grow coconuts. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's crazy, you know? Yeah. So it's like, I, I can go to the ground yep. and I get a diamond. Yep. You know how many first world countries looking for this type of, you know what I'm saying? Everything grows here, but it needs us to, with our knowledge to, to be able to explore this. Yeah. If you have a message, since you also came yeah, from yeah. Um, the diaspora, if you have a message yeah. for the diaspora, as well, what would that yeah. message be? What the diaspora? Can you repeat? What, what I mean, the, I mean the diaspora is anyone who was born yeah. in Africa left, yeah. and guys, they're not thinking guys, of coming back. Home. Stop playing games. Time, time to come back, man. It's get your education, get your degree, come back, and let's do this shit, man. It's it needs all of us. Okay, I'm doing my part here in Angola, and many other Angolans also motivated in doing their parts. But in the future, we can create one big African economy, like as it should be. We see the first world, and they did it very, very well. But it's our time, man. And it's because our older generation, they're getting old. My parents are like 60s, you know what I'm So like, we're going to be the future. So it's like, if we don't do something now, maybe our kids are going to be, they're going to be living the same thing that we did. So it's time for us to make a change. Yeah. I, I want you to take me in Okay, there, good, man. good, good. So. Oh, thank yeah. you. Yeah. So I, I basically want to know how this whole system works, yeah. the apps that you have, how it works and all of that. Yeah. It's, like I said, it's one app. You download the app. Um, it's three different apps, but all built in one. Now it's PayPay. Pay. Um, so it's one fintech app, which you can buy your telephone services, TV mm. services. You can, buy, you can buy water bills, all the stuff like this. You can actually call your taxi. Um, I guess the best way is to explain, you know. <laughs> So here you can call your taxi, um, you can scan by QR codes, you save your money. Um, so it's, you can do many different things inside of the, the PayPay app. And we're always trying to bring more services inside. Mm. To keep How many working. services are you guys running so far? 
uh, I think we have like hundreds of different services, you know. Hundreds. But different services where you can just pay directly in the app. But from merchant standpoints in Angola, maybe we have 2,000 merchants, you know, that we can go and just pay with your phone. So without having to take out cash or paying card, you know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's cash is very tricky now, you know? Yeah. Maybe the notes are fake, maybe even the mo the machines, they can, it's a lot of fraudless stuff going on around the whole world with the with the card. So it's, um, the goal is to make payments more secure. How many users do you guys have at the moment? Uh, about a million people. I've already downloaded and active users using it every single month. Wow. Yeah. Would you say this, Creating this app is so worth it, man. Yeah, it is. It's going good. You know, it's it's, it's cool. It's alright. You know, it's, it's, I'm talking to a young billionaire. <laughs> no, not yet. Not, not I yet. Wish. <laughs> I wish. How, how soon? Yeah, um, maybe forty. For the goal is forty. You know. Forty. Yeah. Yeah, ten so one this now. Is, this Nine is more years to go. This is an office. This is some people okay. working. Some people working here. That's it. Are Chinese. people upstairs in the open space? Yeah, we can go in open space. Right. Yeah. Chinese is for development, making sure that our system is. It's secure. So you guys own this office? Or yes, 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 yes. The whole office? Yes, yes, yes. This part, this is our part. This part. Okay. Here we'll go to the open space, the marketing and sales team. Right now, most salespeople are on the streets. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's on the, yeah, most people are on the sales street. Okay. Uh, yeah, cool. this is the marketing director. This is the, the marketing guy. This is their little thinking area. Sometimes we do podcasts and things here. Oh. Yeah, so it's like marketing and sales. And I think we can go here. It's more like IT and customer service. Okay. I think some are having lunch right now. Oh, yeah. Some are <laughs> working here. I came, I came at a lunch time. How? See, you, they, you have people that like you yeah, here. Right? You know me. Yeah, wow. I've been trying, right? Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, I follow your videos. Wow. Yeah. That's nice. Great to meet you. Great to meet you too, yeah. my brother. Let me, let me hug you, man. Thank you. <laughs> I see. I think your last, last test review, you were in Namibia. Yep. And wondering that you didn't know. The, the uh, Angola, I just walked to Angola, but I couldn't get the visa to enter. But I'm here now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so Elder, Elder is our CTO. So he's in charge, in charge of all the technology, the system, make sure things are working perfectly. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah. Let's take a picture. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it, I'll take it here. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah. Yeah, good. yeah, make good content. Yeah, <laughs> here, one, two. Good, good, good. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so Thank much. You. Yeah. yeah, so I'll walk you here. Yeah, so this is a little bit of just the paper alphas. That's the area where they eat. Mm. Okay. Um, then we'll walk down here. This is my office. Ooh. So this is the goal. So I, I guess my dream is, yeah. is this, you know. Um, okay, one young artist painted this for me, but it pictures what we're trying to do here. Um, I see, okay, Africa, there's an Angola, but we're trying to build this, you know what I'm saying? Like we, Africa needs to be like Dubai or the next big metro city, starting from Angola, but of course the Angola is not the end point for us, right? Ooh. It needs to be the whole of Africa, all the entrepreneurs to be together. So. This in general is, I like to put this here so then sometimes when you're very tired and you're, maybe you feel a little bit unmotivated, you can look at this and be like, all right, we need to get shit done. So, yeah. What has been the major challenge yeah. setting this up in Angola? Um, dealing, adapting to the education in here in Angola. Like we have a lot of people that are very motivated, that want to work, they want to get jobs, but they don't have the work ethic hmm. and they don't have the, the skills, you know? So it's the ones that do have the skills and educated, maybe their salary range is very, very high and affordable for us. So it's like we try to work with people that are, okay, they might not have the skills, but we can build skills, right? Um, we build skills, we, we can help with education, but we look for people that can do or die. You know what I'm saying? They'll ride or die with us like midnight to midnight, they're ready to work, right? But then we'll help them grow. But at the beginning, most of the problems we have is just because of this lack of skills, you know? So it's just, it's, um, because the older generation, the education wasn't that perfect. Mm. We're 
we, we're losing with this, right? I, I know like some countries like Ghana or Nigeria, the education, I know the people are very, very more skilled, but it's, it's happening here. It's little, it just takes time, you know, so. That's I think uh, um, uh, you have to give them a little bit of contest of mm -hmm. uh, what, what he's saying. I think people don't understand. This is a country mm -hmm. that has gone through war for over 20 years. Yeah. So for him to say that, that I, I believe that is the meaning. Because yeah. some there, of us have never been through war. Been yeah, through. so we, we've, yeah. we've been, it was like 30, 40 years we went, through, we went to war with our colonized colonization, which was Portuguese. Yeah. Once we got to the country, then we went to war between ourselves. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, so it ended like in 2000, low, low 2002. Yeah. So um, at that time, of course, we didn't have the best doctors, the best, um, the best educators, of course, right? So it's just um, from 2022, that's when the country started building. So the country is really only like 25, 30 years old. You understand, right? So it's, it's not the country's fault. We're pushing. That's why the younger generation that's coming from outside, we need to do our part in trying to make it better for the next 20, 30 years. But you know what? I, I'm mm. so inspired, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, you look so young and mm -hmm. uh, what you've done. I, I believe that mm -hmm. there's so many young people out there that will be mm -hmm. so inspired of what you've done. Exactly. I mean, if you speak to a younger guy watching this video right exactly. now, exactly. I mean, exactly. what will you tell him? Like, uh, just, it's time to work. Um, it's try to... Um, I'm all about entrepreneurship and creating jobs, but it's, we need to understand that not everyone has that skill. Hmm. It's normal, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes if you don't have the skill to create and be a business person, then okay, find a good employer and try to do your job. And try to be the best worker and give it all to them every single day and help them accomplish the dream, right? Hmm. Um, for those who want to, who are young and you want to try to build something, do it. You can fall. But at least you're still young, you can yeah. fall, you can just get back up and brush your shoulders off and do it again <laughs> and then, until that door finally opens. You know? How many so, times did you fall? A lot. We still fall every day, you know. But now we're like, it's, now I like falling. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, can you start getting bored? Yeah. And you just want to risk. Like, before, the first risk was always the difficult, you know, the most difficult. And, and um, after the first risk, you're like, shit, can I need to do more. Okay. You're like, Every crazy idea, let's do it. Like, cause you don't have any, you know, so you don't have that fear anymore. So it's like some people have that fear. So once you let go of that fear and just, just jump, it's like, you, okay, if you die, okay, you die, it happens. But if you don't die, okay, you get up, and then you get up and do it again. I know and believe that you really want to take this uh, business to a different part of the continent. Yes. But there's definitely a challenge. Of course. That, that, that's what I'm saying. It's like, as we said before, I think yeah. all the leaders, the politicians need to sit in, in Africa, like, like it, it's as as we business people do, you know. You sit, maybe one guy, okay, Nigerian guy, maybe the guy in the central. I'll tell my president to try to do this. Invite all the ladies here for like a network. You know what I'm saying? And there have good food, good wine, and just have a, a close dialogue with each other. Like okay, we know we also we all we all sometimes depend on support from other different African countries yeah. normally. But like we need to open this shit up. Trade needs to be free, right? Free, free between borders, each border. Mm -hmm. Even though we're trying to make money, okay, let's just have, let's just let's be open, right? Um, for me to go to Nigeria or Ghana, I should need a visa. For you to come here, you should need a visa. You look in Golan. You know what I'm saying? So we're, look, I'm Golan. You're looking me only ten days. Ten days of you, like, <laughs> come on, it doesn't make sense, right? Exactly. So um, things need to be open. And yeah. once we have this happening. Um, I think we're going to have a lot of business between us. Maybe like we can be self-sustained as an African continent, we can be self-sustainable. Hmm. But it takes like someone to just do it. That, that's why it's like it's, uh, we need to go younger. Like leaders need to be young, start going younger because I think younger people, especially they're coming from different countries, you understand like you need to network. You know what I mean? Like for me to do what I'm doing is I've networked a lot. You know what I'm saying? I have friends that go out and go see, you know, and you talk and maybe our leaders right now are very political and military, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So um, when it's military, military people are more strong, you know what I'm saying? They have to, that's how they were born. Yeah. That's how they were growing. It's not their fault, right? But I think now we're, we're at a different level of doing business. Now exactly. it needs to be networking relationship. We need to open up the, uh, the market. Are, are you hoping that someday businessmen will run Africa? It, it needs to be ran by business people. Like yeah. it's, it's, it's like I said, I see sometimes in the, even in Angola, politicians are going to strong positions to be minister. I'm like, it's like, what is he going to do? It's not, the thing is, once he starts making errors, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's not his fault. It's like, who appointed him in the first place? I can't appoint 
um, a doctor. For example, for my accounting, I can't appoint the guy that's a sales guy. Sales guy like money. Exactly. <laughs> you see? They like commission. The sales guy, I, he can't be an accountant. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, so if I put a sales guy in accounting and then the books start looking weird, it's my fault that I made this error. You know, <laughs> so you need to find exactly who is who studied accounting, who's the best at it, who has a passion for it, and put him in that position. It's simple. It's like, but it takes yeah, education though. So it's but that's that's how it needs to be. Where do we see your company in the next 10 years? Next 10 years, man, it's a unicorn. I hope we can be all over Africa, right? Competing with all the other African countries we in, where it's like even you from Ghana can have pay, pay, but you can send money to your other account. You, I, I don't know what other accounts you have in Ghana. And I, it needs to be free. And then for me, my company is like, okay, I always try to, have, I'm not worried about competition, but I always try to have the best service, right? So if everyone has my service, then okay, I'll, I'll be happy, you know? If you had a chance to change one thing in Africa, mm -hmm. what would it be? Um, I wish, I wish we had better teachers. Yeah, because through all, through all the um, problems, all the big problems we have, from wars, from it's all miscommunication, right? And it all goes by education. Like it's like we can't. It's education is a root. Like I, my kid is two years old, you know, and like I, it's. And I'm seeing as a baby how he's growing. It's like education, like you have to be on top of him. If you're not on top of him, he starts going right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you have to keep pushing him every day to, to go left. You know, so it's, it's, education is the root of all of our issues, war issues, from ego, from anything is, is education. So I think we, I wish we can have the best teachers. I wish all governmental, all, all African countries, in, instead of, 70 or 80 percent of their budget being military expenses, right? Um, I think they should invest in having the best teachers here for us. Yeah, because yeah. after you have the best teachers and the people are very smart, then we're going to start creating, we're going to start mining them, we're going to start producing them, we're going to start creating factories from our head. We think for ourselves, right? Because you can spend so much money on military, on trade, on things that don't matter when people smart. You know what I'm saying? They can just do it way cheaper. So yeah, it's education. Are you saying there's something wrong with our education system? It's like I said, it's because of war. All most of the African countries, long years of war, it never built up as it should, right? So that's the biggest problem. Um, so I think we need to step back and invest most in this, you know, because um, through everything. It's like if you have, if the kids, like, like Angola has 35 million people, but 70% mm. are 15 years old and under. If these kids don't grow smart, the next 15 years, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We can have a flying city like Dubai, flying cars, flying everything, right? Or we'll have an economy, depending on Chinese, depending on American, bringing things here, you know? So that's why it's, it's very, very, very important. But I heard that Angola is really heavy on imports. It's it's that's what's, it's heavy on imports because like for example why are we importing food? I think why am I importing rice when I can go to my lunch where you went? Okay, put some seeds, put some water, and grow rice. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Why? But it's like we don't we lack education for agriculture. You know, so I feel even for me, I once I came back here I started backwards. Hmm. I came. I came from a technology, I loved America, I loved Google, I was coming from this technology and I built my technology apps when I was able to bring 10,000 jobs just from this. But I think, man, Angola didn't need this, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Okay, it's good, they, it's a need, it's people are using it, but it's like, now I'm going backwards. I am started taking, I'm starting studying farm. It says, wow. once I started making money, I bought a farm. You know, at least 5,000 acre farm. I don't know shit about farm, but I'm learning. And I'm starting to do what? Study, and I'm starting to, all the best farmers in Angola, which they're not much, starting to have lunch, start having dinner, going to the bars, just to feed off how they did it. So it's like, I think if, maybe since I, the way I motivated many people from the technology standpoint, if I do the same thing from agriculture, maybe all the young generation will start also farming. You're looking forward to invest in agriculture? Yes, yes, yes. That's because we import, amazing. we import everything. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like we import chicken. We import, you know 
we import chicken, yeah. we import salt, and everything. I, we... guess, I guess the only thing you guys don't import is human beings, man. Yeah, yeah it, doesn't, it doesn't make it doesn't make sense. Like everything we grow, we can grow any product here, but it, like it's like it's we need the education because it takes time. Education goes because when you're building a company, it takes patience. Mm -hmm. It's like you need to know the products. It's like it's all about the head, you know. So that's that's. Yeah, I think everything is. It's our culture. I, I believe that funding in Africa is extremely tough. Yeah. So my next question would be like, how did you guys fund this whole company? Yeah. So every, just like the way the American dream is, right? It's everything we first will start. The first business started with the Puka. Mm -hmm. And then, okay, it was us and my four partners and each family member, 2,000, 3,000, like family fund, right? Everyone from the four founders did the job. And I think we had like sixty thousand dollars, and we were able to like buy the app and buy a couple motorbikes, right? And with this, and with our head, because most of the, all the shareholders were from outside. One was Russian, the other three also were coming from America. So with our head, we were able to start. I mean, the all the all of you were Angolan born, and you came back. Yes, 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 yes. All of them are wow. back. Wow. Yeah, all of them are back. We, it, that's what I'm saying. Were you brothers? And I didn't know who they were. What? I didn't know who they were. I was coming from America, and because in America I opened up my delivery business too, in Indiana, and I was coming here, and I was and I was starting to build my. I wanted to build it here. That was my dream. I started doing the business plan. And you look at the competition. I put Google, um, Angolan food delivery online, and I see a guy named Erickson. Shit, this guy's trying to do the same business. <laughs> <laughs> and he's giving a speech to his his school, okay, and in, in like in in LA. Like his, his business plan, you know, the school to end the university, you have to give a big mm, project. Yeah. His was delivery. Okay. Like, shit, this guy's also doing it. Now, this is where education comes. I could be like, screw these guys. These guys, yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm gonna do everything to be the best and compete with them. I go on LinkedIn, I look him up. Erickson, hey, how you doing, bro? I'm Wilson. Yeah, how you doing? He's like, hey, I don't know who you are, you don't know who I am. <laughs> But I'm coming from America. This is my company, Trans and Delivery. I've done them this, you know what I'm saying? And I see that you guys are trying to do the same thing. So maybe we should try to sit, sit, you know. So we sat at a hotel. We drank a coffee. We talked. And he had the same dream. He's like, shit, I'm trying to do this too. I'm trying to do this too. It's like, it's like, man, I already have some business partners that I'm doing this with. But it's like, I need, I want you in. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like, me too, I don't, like, I, and I try to network with other people, it's like, man, I need people to have the same vision, so it's like, let's, let's sit down and do it, so he met next day, two days after we meet with the, all the other partners that he had with, asking me so many questions, where I was like, guys, I know the business, man, you know what I'm saying, and after, like, no, guys, let's do this, eight years later, can we have 10,000 workers, and, but this is just, if I would have been like, you know what I'm saying, I would be yeah. alone, yeah, man, like, we don't, you can't be greedy. You can't do shit by yourself. You need team. You know what I'm saying? The thing is, I hate is doing things by myself. I was like, shit, I need team. I need who can help me. You know, who is the best piece for this family, for this business to go? That's how things happen, man. Mm -hmm. I want to say I'm so proud of you. Thank you. And, uh, I proud wish of I, you too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wish I could meet all the team, but yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, I, I guess you represent all of them. Yes, yes. And uh, my brother, mm -hmm. thank you so much for talking thank to you, me. I really you, appreciate thank your time. Thank you, thank you. And Thank I'll you see you at the other side. Yeah, yeah. I would love to introduce some people to you. Yeah. Um, I, I think mean, we'll network a lot. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, in, in different countries that are also yeah, yeah. doing similar things. And yeah. I think they don't have the app. So probably yeah. you can just um, give them the whole idea. See, and then, yeah, no you problem. just, no I don't problem. know, maybe we might have Pepe in Cote d'Ivoire. Yeah, yeah. Very and, soon. Anyway, so I'll all, all the fans, just go on Pepe. You guys want us to go there? And, we'll, and what, we'll what, go. What, that's what I'm saying. Like, um, <clears throat> if are you looking forward, let's say, Somebody want to be um, maybe a partner from Ghana. I want to bring PayPal, like pay to. I don't know Ghana market. I have the system, I know the business, and I have a very ambitious mindset. Okay, but I don't know Ghana, so it's like I'm not gonna go to Ghana and do business in Ghana without someone that's from there. Ghana. So I'm like, hey guy, come on. I have this. I need a guy that knows the market, that can open this up, that knows the local, blah blah blah. You know what I'm saying? Hey. How you want to do it? 50 50? Okay, 50 is this side, 50 is your side. The same way we did here, connect and let's move. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, we, I don't need everything by myself. What, I don't know what I want to do. What, what does partnership <clears throat> mean to you? Huh? What does partnership mean to you? It's like this everyone does their part. You know? Like, what am I, for example, what am I going to do with like $100 billion? Nothing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, nothing. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, if you have five, he has five, he has five, he has five. We're all just chilling. <laughs> I, I, I want to be a business partner. Yeah, yeah. So 
we're gonna go to Ghana. I'm we're there. taking Pepe to Ghana. I'm there. I'm and there. Uh, we're just gonna talk. I'm gonna give you my yeah. contact. We'll talk yeah. and see how best we can take Pepe to, mm -hmm. I mean, West Africa. I mean, I'm not a shareholder. Eh?